This project will describe the odontogenic keratocyst. The odontogenic keratocyst, also known as the OKC, is a parakeratinized developmental cyst of odontogenic origin. It forms from non-inflammatory proliferation of the dental lamina. The OKC is also sometimes associated with a mutation in the PTCH1 gene. The OKC was first identified in 1876 and was known as a cholesteatoma, which is a cystic mass of keratin squames with a living matrix. Figure 1 shows an H&E section showing a cystic lumen lined by carat par parakeratinized stratified squamous epithelium. It was first classified as the OKC in 1956, later termed the keratocystic odontogenic tumor, or the KOT, and in 2017 was reclassified more accurately as the OKC by the World Health Organization. The peak incidence of the OKC is the second to third decade, but it can occur at any age. Lesions are uncommon in children, however, if they are found, they are often a characteristic of nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome, or Gorland syndrome, and there are often multiple cysts in the head and neck. There is no predilection for males versus females, and upon clinical examination, the OKC will present as a non-symptomatic mild swelling. In figure 2, you can see a mild swelling located in the mandible. Expansion is usually minimal with the OKC, however it is more common if it's located in the mandala for mandible versus the maxilla. The OKC also has a high recurrence rate of about 15 to 30 percent and malignant transformation is rare. Radiographically, the OKC will present as a well-defined corticated radiolucent cyst with a smooth outline. The OKC can be both, both unilocular or multilocular, however root resorption and displacement of teeth are uncommon. The most common location for the OKC is the posterior mandible, mainly the body or ascending ramus. OKCs are twice as likely more common to occur in the mandible than they are the maxilla, however if they are found in the maxilla, it will commonly be located in the third molar region. 40% of the lesions are associated with or adjacent to the crown of an unerupted tooth. In figure 3, you can see a unilocular radiolucency in the posterior mandible. Figure 4 shows another OKC in the posterior mandible, however this lesion is multilocular. And figure 4 part B shows cross-sectional CBCT scans through the lesion. Figure 5 shows a rather large multilocular OKC located in the mandible that is well-defined and corticated. There are a couple variants of the odontogenic keratocyst. The first, which we have discussed, is the nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome. This syndrome is common in children, and radiographically, many OKCs will be located in the head and neck. As far as the clinical features of this syndrome, patients will also have palmar and plantar pitting in the hands and feet, bifid rib, dermal calcinosis, and calcification of the falx cerebri in the brain. There is also the orthokeratinized odontogenic cyst, which varies just slightly from the OKC. Orthokeratinized odontogenic cysts, or the OOC, will have orthokeratinized epithelium rather than parakeratinized epithelium, as in the case of the OKC. These cysts are common in younger men, the mean age is 36 years old, and are also most commonly found in the posterior mandible. They may be associated with swelling of the jaw and pain. Figure 6 shows multiple OKCs that occur with Gorland syndrome, and figure 7 shows a, a radiolucency in the posterior mandible that is an OOC, so would have a histopathological presentation of orthokeratinized epithelium rather than parakeratinized epithelium. If the lesion presents with a unicystic or paracoronal position, you will want to consider the dentigerous cyst, the radicular cyst, a residual cyst, and a lateral periodontal cyst. A dentigerous cyst will always be attached at the level of the CEJ to an unerupted tooth. A radicular cyst will be located at the root apex of a non-vital tooth. A residual cyst will always be at the site of a recently extracted tooth, and a lateral periodontal cyst is always located lateral to a vital tooth. The most common presentation, as we discussed, of the OKC is in the posterior mandible or maxilla. If the lesion is multilocular, you'll want to consider the macho differential diagnosis. This includes the myxoma, the myeloblastoma, central giant cell granuloma, and a hemangioma. 
Myxomas are rare, and they are more likely to have resorption or displacement of roots. Ameloblastomas are very expansive and will also have resorption or displacement. A central giant cell granuloma will show granulation tissue and giant cells um, upon histopathological examination, and a hemangioma will have pain, swelling, mobility, brute, and resorption and displacement of roots. If there are multiple radiolucencies, you'll want to consider nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome or Gorlin syndrome. Once you have considered the OKC as a potential lesion, you'll want to take a CBCT scan to visualize the full extent and number of lesions. After verifying that it's an OKC, you'll want to biopsy and follow up with surgical treatment. Surgical treatment inv involves resection followed by chemical carter carterization of the cavity with Carnoy syndrome, marsupialization, which allows reduction in size of the cavity, and curatage to verify that it has been fully removed. Due to the high recurrence rate of the OKC, you'll want to follow up annually with a CBCT scan or pantomograph for at least five years. Figure 8 and 9 show the treatment of the OKC. These are the references we used for the presentation on the odontogenic keratocyst, and these are our references for the images that were used. And that is everything you need to know about the odontogenic keratocyst.